Hey, hey, back again. Right. Uh, this is going to be a quick video. Uh, this came up because when I've been doing these videos in the past, a question that comes up a lot is uh, what is the relationship between Keppel and Vario? These are two separate projects, uh, but I tend to talk about them very close together because they are quite related. Um, Vario is a compiler. Uh, it takes Lisp code as lists and it returns GLSL along with a load of metadata and stuff. Um, Vario doesn't need GLSL to work at all. It's completely separate. Uh, you only need that OpenGL context when you actually need to touch the GPU and do things there. So this can be used for anything, basically. Like You can use it in other projects, other Lisp projects that need to um, have access to the code. Maybe you're using another one of the Lisp game libraries, and you want to just use this for creating the GLSL so you don't have to mess with the strings yourself. Things like that. You don't even have to like use the generated code in this project at all. Uh, one of the uses I heard was um, this guy had to work on a WebGL project, but just was much more comfortable writing things in Lisp. So he just wrote the shaders in Varia, had it compile, and then took the resulting GLSL code and put it into his JavaScript program. And, you know, that was enough for him. And I think that's just awesome. I'd love to hear about stuff like that. So if you have one of those stories, send me mail. That brings us on to Keppel. So Keppel's job is to abstract... Uh, OpenGL uh, to make it a more sane interface and to make it feel lispy. And the idea is to make working with the GPU feel like something just native to common Lisp. And I'm hoping what the result of that is, is you can just focus more of your energy on the actual problems you're trying to solve and worry less about the kind of trivial differences in API or syntax and things like that. So Kebble does provide um, a way of writing uh, shaders, GPU stages and things like this, as Lisp code and a way of composing those into pipelines. And so behind the scene, what it's doing is it's calling Vario and getting it to do the actual translation from what you wrote into GLSL. But then Keppel goes further than that and does a lot of extra plumbing. It does all, handles all the uploading to the GPU. It handles the discovery of all the kind of locations of the uniforms and knows how to upload data there so that it, cre it will create a function um, that when called basically treats your GPU, GPU code like you're just a regular function on the CPU. And that's how you're able to map uh, the GPU streams over this kind of GPU function. So it's just making it feel like other things in Lisp. Now, since Vario is completely separate, um, you might want to use it in your own project. So I thought I'll just show the very basics of how to interact with it. So if we go over here, everything's done through this vcompile. Uh, function. Um, I'll just keep on typing that wrong. And you see that we've got a few arguments down here. The mandatory ones are you provide a list of uniforms. So let's say we're going to have something called scale and it's going to be a float. Um, and you also have to provide the version as a keyword. Um, so that's going to be 330. And then you can um, provide as many of these stages as you want compiled. And then um, the compiler will check for some of the stages, will check to make sure that the outputs of one stage make sense being fed into the next one. The support for tessellation uh, and geometry shaders is very, very basic right now. It probably will just kind of opt out and say, I'm not going to check this and give you a little warning, um, but it will let you compile things. So feel free to test this and start reporting problems. Um, it's basically just a time constraint thing. I haven't got around to doing that yet, along with other projects. But we're only going to create a vertex shader right now. And so what we're going to do is you provide a list. And the first element of that list has to be the input arguments to that shader. And then the rest of the list is just code um, that you want compiled. So let's make a vert that is a vec3. And then we're going to make that into a VEC4. Actually, let's multiply it by the scale, that, that uniform that came in. So we're going to take vert, and we're going to multiply it by the scale, and then we're going to stick one on the end, so it's a VEC4, and then we compile, and we see we've got a result. And then we're going to take the first thing, oops, what am I doing? First thing from that result, and then we're going to get the GLSL code out of there. And there's your compiled code. And you can see that the uniform is also included there. Now, the compile result actually contains a lot of information. Let's see if we can do this with i. 
um, you can see that there is an AST node there uh, with a lot of type information and there's just a bunch of metadata. And one other thing of interest is probably in here. Actually, no, I'll leave that for another video. Um, but the main thing is the AST and the resulting GLSL code. The nice thing about all this stuff is there's no reason that this has to be done um, just at runtime. You can do this at compile time. And so if let's pretend we're going to start um, setting up codes, we could do the kinds of things that we see in Keppel, the kind of macros that make all this feel really nice. So let's define a macro. Um, it's going to be called def vertex shader. We're just going to worry about that stage for now. We're going to take a name. We're going to take a list of inargs, a list of uniforms, and a body. And then the resulting code is going to be um, this call to compile. We're going to make a variable for now, which we're just going to name with name. We're going to do the same thing we just did on the right hand side and grab the GLSL result of calling this function. Well, let's just tidy that up. And so this guy is going to actually be populated by uh, uniforms. Oh, we're going to have to make sure that we uh, evaluate this code at compile time. We're going to replace this bit uh, with the inox. And we're going to replace this with the body code. And that should be enough. Oh, that comma's not inside of that quote. That's true. Let's do that. And it's complaining that we have done something wrong here. Redefinition, that's fine. That's because I was playing with this earlier and making sure I didn't muck too much of it up while I was recording this video. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, now let's recreate the example we did um, in the wrapper a second ago. So we're gonna do def vertex shader. Uh, we're gonna call it, I don't know, Dave. And we're gonna provide some in arguments. That's gonna be our vert, vec4. Uh, we're going to provide our uniforms, which is going to be scale. Oops. And that's going to be a float. Actually, let's keep vert as a vector. And then we're going to provide our body, which is going to be, uh, we're going to make a vector. We're going to take vert and scale it. And we're going to stick a one there. And we compile. And then we go and look at the variable, and we can see that the code is there. So it doesn't take too much imagination to start thinking, OK, right, we could take this result. And instead of just sticking it in a variable, um, we could cache it in a function. And then the first time that function is called, we're going to upload that code to the GPU. And then we're going to do all the kind of standard things that OpenGL does to um, call one of these pieces of code and get it to run on the GPU. And that's basically how Kevl came about anyway. So um, yeah, take this stuff, feel free to play with it and um, I'd love to see what you come up with. I think that's more than enough for this video so I will catch you next time. Cheers, bye.